In this lecture, we talk about count regression models. So in count regression models, the response variable, it takes on values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So the, the values are some kind of a count. And the model for count data is Poisson regression, which we will discuss in this lecture. So once again, the response variable y, it takes on values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. But the predictors are as they are in a regression. They could be continuous or categorical. So let us see this in an example. So say you have data of university A, B, C. And the data is about the jobs offered. So this is number of jobs offered. The race of the student, income of their parents and the GPA of the student. So a student whose race is 3, whose parents income was $39,693. We are dividing the income by $1,000 to scale it. So race is 3, income is 39.693 and GPA is 2.53. That person was offered 0 jobs. Then coming to row 2, race of the person is 3. Income of the parents is 48.557 or $48,557. GPA was 1.8. This person was offered one job. Then there is a per another person. His race is 2. His income level of the parents is 59.074. His GPA was 3.39. This person was offered two jobs. Then another person. His race is 1. The parents income level was seventy five thousand eight hundred forty one dollars his GPA was three point nine six and he was offered one job so this is the outcome of the model so this is our response variable and these are the predictors so you come up with the model the, the model is a Poisson regression model so input into the model would be the race of the candidate, income of their parents, and uh, their GPA. And the output would be number of jobs offered. So you have past data on all of these parameters and you want to build a model like this so jobs offered could be 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 any number and uh, income is continuous so this is a continuous variable income is continuous GPA is continuous but race is categorical so this is categorical variable because race only will take value 1 2 or 3 so we are considering three races here so let us uh, offer a brief understanding of what this Poisson regression model is and where it does it come from. Now in this regression model or the Poisson regression model it is assumed that y that is the number of jobs or the response variable so y is a response variable so number of jobs this comes from a Poisson distribution. Now what is Poisson distribution? So Poisson distribution is a count distribution which basically associates probability with the count. So it takes all values from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it takes all these discrete values and then associates probability to each of these outcomes. So probability that this uh, y will take on value n. This n could be 0, it could be 1, it could, it could be 2, it could be 3, 4. Is this mu to the power of n exponential of minus mu divided by n factorial. So n is the number here. So probability that y is equal to 3, then you replace n with 3 here. Now what is this mu? So mu is the mean of the Poisson distribution. Now this is an exponential distribution as you can see there is an exponential here. So to model it, you have to take log. So the model is like this log of mu that is log of your mean of your distribution is equal to a linear regression model. 
so mean of the poisson distribution this is modeled as a linear regression model so first let us focus on the uh, right hand side on this side so this is exactly how a linear regression looks like so here you want to estimate the constant alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 all the way to alpha n and x1 x2 x3 all the way to xn are given to you for example in this case we are given race income and gpa so uh, we could rewrite our model as c plus uh, alpha 1 times race plus alpha 2 times income plus alpha 3 times gpa now we come to the left hand side so this is the mean of the distribution so you you can see this poisson distribution it essentially depends upon this mean mu so this is the parameter so you have the count but the probability would depend upon the mean of the distribution so this mu is the mean of the distribution so this mu this comes from the jobs so you take the average of the jobs that will give you the mean mu so once you have the mean mu you will have if you have n observations you will have n equations but your left hand side is a constant and your right hand side keeps changing with the input data so then you can model it and uh, the Poisson regression basically says that your mean of your Poisson distribution is dependent upon the variables for example in our case race income and GPA so obviously once you have the mean then you can have the probability associated with the counts so let us do this in R so the first thing is you clear the memory you read your data set so read table this is the address and this is the name of the file header is true so let us see the first four lines of our uh, data set so row one the job offered is zero race is three income is $39,693 it is 39.693 because we have scaled it we have actually divided the income of parents uh, and divided it by thousand and this is the GPA of the student row two job is zero race of the person is three income of parents is 45.250 GPA is 1.99 and so on so first thing is your race is a categorical data so this is categorical so since this is a categorical data it takes on only values 1 2 and 3 you have to factor it out so you make a new data set d2 and you take the original data set d1 in d1 you say take this race and make a factor out of it so factor race so this becomes a categorical indicator now you come to your model your Poisson regression model so PM1 is the name of the model so GLM is the generalized linear models so you are saying that job is the response and race income and GPA are predictors so job to race income and GPA exactly like you would do in a linear regression but now your family is Poisson and your data is D2 so data is this D2 which you have just modified with the factors so once you have this so notice that you have a log right here so your interpretation would be in a log counts now this is not very helpful we don't want a log of counts what we want is actual counts so to make log counts into counts you take exponential of this so therefore you will take exponential so we are going to take the coefficients of our model coefficients of our model and the confidence interval of our model uh, so let us see um, what are the coefficients which this model throws out and how to interpret them so this is the output we have the coefficients here and we have the confidence interval here so notice that in standard linear regression if your zero is in the confidence interval so zero is part of the confidence interval then the coefficient is not significant the coefficient is not significant so exponential of 0 this is uh, 1 so we are taking exponents here 
So if one is in the confidence interval, then the coefficient is not significant in our case. So let us start with GPA. So it goes from 0.912 to 1.04. So this is your confidence interval. It has one in it. So this is not significant. Income goes from 1.04 to 1.08, does not have one in it. So this is significant. Race three. So notice that there you have race three and race two. There is no race one. So the comparison is with race one. So in this confidence interval, you go from 0.58 to 2.98. This has one in it. So this is not significant. So there is no difference between race one and race three. So if the student is of race one or he's of race three, it has no impact on the job offer if you keep everything else significant. Now we come to race two. It goes from 1.55 to 5.6. There is no one in the interval. So this is significant. So this means that there is significant difference between race one and race two. So if everything else is constant, uh, race two person has the coefficient of 2.811. So what does this mean? That means if everything is, is, else is constant, if the race of the person is two compared to race one, then he is going to get a job offer 2.8 times more or you can say count is 2.8 times more. So job count is for race two is 2.8 times race one. So the job count changes by a factor of 2.8. Now this is also significant income. So the here it is 1.066. That means one unit increase in income So income is parental income. One unit increase in parental income increases the job count by a factor of 1.066. So one unit increase in income, we had uh, taken one unit as $1,000 because we had divided everything by $1,000 uh, in our data set. So one unit increase in income means a $1,000 increase in income of the parents increases the job count by 1.066. So this is kind of difficult to interpret. So you always have to use a predict command to get a concrete understanding of what this means. So first thing, notice that the GPA is not significant. So we construct a new model in which GPA is no longer there. So we have a new model PM2. Uh, again, uh, you have job, factors are race so race is the factor and then the other predictor is income so we have dropped gpa because gpa is not significant so family again is poisson our data set is uh, d2 so first data frame we feed in is that you you take the mean of income and you take all races one two three so this is the our data set so as we said we are going to feed in the model income and race so this is our model in which you feed in income and race and the output is number of jobs. So again, uh, you have S2, your data frame, uh, your income is, uh, so here was the mean of the income in the data set. Um, again, I'm taking the mean, but multiplying it by 1.5. And the race we are taking as all three races, one, two, and three. So income are multiplying by 1.5. So here, Average income is 63.66208 or $63,000. And here you are 63,000 times uh, 1.5 gives you $95,000. So there are two different data frames which you're going to feed into our model and find out. So first you feed in this data frame S1. That is you feed in this, these values into your data set. So your model is PM2 right here. So we, we have dropped GPA from the model, as you can see, we are just feeding in income and race. You're feeding in S1, that is this data set. Type is response, SE fit true. Uh, you, it gives you the fitted values. So for race one, so corresponding to this, you have job offers of 0.25.
corresponding to race 2 you have job offers of 0 0.71 corresponding to race 3 you have job offer of 0 0.32 and now you can interpret this coefficient right here so you see that this 0 0.711 divided by 0 0.256 this is approximately this 2.81 so you can see that you have changed the race from 1 to 2. You've gone from 1 to 2 and income is the same. Your uh, job count has increased by a factor of 2.81. So notice that if you have average income, then uh, race 2 is slightly more likely to get a job, but everything is still less than 1. So between race and 1 and race 3, you see there is a difference 0 0.25 and 0 0.32, but we know here that there is no statistical difference between these two values so you can say that between race 1 and race 3 there is no difference but between race 1 and race 2 and obviously then between race 3 and race 2 there is difference so 1 and 3 are same these two are same and this is statistically different this is different so now you feed in data set s2 here the income level is higher so you feed in data set s2 and this is the output you get so corresponding to race 1 this is your output race 1 gets 1.95 jobs person with race 2 his output is he gets 5.416177 jobs corresponding to race 3 the person gets 2.51887 jobs so again uh, there is no difference so mathematically 1.95 is different from 2.51 but statistically these two are the same and this is different so instead of uh, feeding in 1 2 3 and these income levels you can make your own data frame so you could have your own data frame where your income could be you know hundred thousand dollars and you know thirty thousand dollars and then twenty thousand dollars and then you can decide your feeding in your own race it could be one one two something like this so you can do whatever you want with the data frame and you can get a prediction but to understand the prediction you need to know what the corresponding confidence intervals are